Hi, my name is William Gilbert. I was born on May 24th, 1544, in Essex, England. In England, I went to Cambridge University, where I did not only get a bachelor's degree, but I also got a master's degree and a title as a doctor of medicine. Today, I bring to you an explanation to why compasses spin and point us to the right direction. And this is because the Earth is a giant lodestone that spin on its axis, just as the Earth do, every 24 hours. In this scientific test, I also discuss the simple rules of magnetism, such as opposites attract and like repel, and the importance of magnetism and electricity. I began with my investigations in 1581, and it is until today, the 1600s, that I present to you my completed work. I began by reading and examining previous texts in magnetism, such as Robert Norman's Magnetic Dip. Then, I assigned and performed my own experiments, not only on electric forces, but also at magnetic forces. I observed the behavior of a small compass needle when placed on a spherical magnet, and this is how I deduced that the Earth itself was a giant magnet. I made my discoveries in London at the same time as I worked as a royal physician for Queen Elizabeth I. I decided to research about magnetism because I felt passionate towards it, even though I was trained as a physician. And like, are you connected with the Renaissance or exploration or whatever? Yes. I decided to go for a four-year grand tour to Europe, where I spent more of my time in Italy. There, I was able to get familiarity with electromagnetic effects that the Greeks had discovered. I got inspired from their word electron in order to create the word electricity. I also based some of my knowledge in the static electricity in the work of Talus, who said that amber rubbed with wool attracts light bodies such as dry leaves. I also got from them the knowledge that lodestones attracts iron. So, do I consider myself a humanist? Well, I am a trained doctor and I formed the royal and a royal physician, so therefore, yes, exploration was the one thing that really made me wonder. The use of the company needle became greater as a result of the expansion of the British maritime trade. The increase in interest in compass navigation is what interests me to pursue my investigation with flowstones, because I didn't know how do compasses work, and the idea of them working puzzled me. The old methods that they used to sail with such as the idea that the Earth was fixed along with the stars that rotated with us every 24 hours also made me wonder. This is my main discovery. This is a magnetized cerella, a spherical magnet serving as a model of the Earth. As I move the compass over the surface, I can see how it imitates the same behavior as a compass does when it goes around the world. It does not go to the middle of the Earth, but rather it seems to be pointing to the extremes of the Earth. However, there is a variation in the Atlantic Ocean. The, the needle of the compass seems to not always point north, but rather it points to Europe when it's near Europe and it points to America when it's near America. And the answer to this is because the Earth is not a perfect sphere. Otherwise, the direction would always be the same, no matter where it is. This happens in other parts of the world as well. I also denoted that an alloy made of iron and carbon is not a strong magnet, but rather a long iron bar is. And when this one becomes an induced magnet, it has two poles, a south and a north pole. There are also simple rules that we can see with magnets. This ones have a north and south pole in one of the edges. So we can see how opposites attract and likes repel. And like, do you do epistemology or cosmology? I studied both cosmology and epistemology. First, I discovered the invisible forces that explain how magnetism holds up the planets and their orbits and how they can be used to explain the behavior of the universe and that the space between the planets is vacuum. I also discovered that stars were not fixed. They did not move with the Earth when we rotate 
I calculated the implied velocities of them and realized the incredibly large distance that exists between us and them. So even though the Earth is not the universe, I still studied the Earth. I said that this Earth was not a perfect sphere based on my experiment. Epistemology. So I started by asking myself questions. Why do people think that garlic will demagnetize this lodestone? How and why do compasses work? And do diamonds really magnetize iron? I began asking myself all those different questions. And I came to the conclusion that in order for my, for my ideas to work, I had to test them and to do several experiments before I can say that they were, sure, that they were right. And how are your ideas so different from the ones we used to have? Well, people used to think that the compass needle was attracted by the pole starch, which had a fixed position. They did not understand why compasses did not exactly point at north when they went to the Americas. And other theories before mine said that the compass needle was sloped downwards into the earth. Also, they did not have a clue why the amber effect worked, which I denoted as static electricity. Does this mean I can finally bring garlic into my boat? Hmm, maybe I should keep researching. I feel like magnet poles might change over time. He made me think that I need to follow the same scientific inquiry process as he did. In addition, in one of his chapters, Gilbert wrote and discussed about stellar and terrestrial motions. Hmm, just giving me an idea. Gravity? We try making a train using magnetism that goes really, really, really fast. Oh no, it's 4 a.m. in the morning and I haven't finished my history homework. I'm just gonna use this electrical light and my computer that has magnets as a base to finish. I think I'm getting lost here. I'm just gonna pull out my phone that tells me my exact location without having to use a compass. Finally, some words that are related to me magnetic pole. The ends of the magnetic earth, electric force, force that exists between charged objects, electric attraction, the attraction created by static electricity and how this one attracts different objects, electricity, from the Greek word electron, it refers to the attraction of small objects after being rubbed, and terella, little earth in Latin, it is the model of a magnetized ball.